If I had told you a decade ago that SpaceX would one day dominate the space industry, breaking record after record, you might have laughed, thinking I was out of my mind. It's not that you doubted the potential for innovation. It was just that SpaceX was, at the time, more of a startup in an industry already filled with established giants like NASA, Boeing, and Russian space agencies. So, when Musk boldly promised to revolutionize the rocket market, many thought he was merely seeking attention. Fast forward to today and the landscape of space exploration has dramatically transformed. Looking for the most reliable rocket? The Falcon 9 holds that title. In search of the most powerful operational rocket? The Falcon Heavy claims that distinction. And if you're curious about the largest rocket ever developed, although still under development, the Starship points to the future of interplanetary travel. All of these are SpaceX's achievements, showing a clear dominance in the space sector. And above all, SpaceX recently achieved a milestone with their Falcon 9 rocket, capturing news headlines worldwide. Before we delve deeper, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates about SpaceX's groundbreaking achievements. The Falcon 9 rocket's journey began in 2010, and since its debut, it has become known for its reusability, fundamentally changing the economics of spaceflight. This rocket was the first to successfully demonstrate the capability to return to Earth and land after completing orbital missions. Before the advent of Falcon 9, Rockets were largely seen as single-use vehicles. Traditionally, once a rocket had completed its mission, delivering its payload into orbit, the booster stages were discarded, usually falling back to Earth and landing in the ocean, never to be used again. This practice was not only wastefully expensive, but also unsustainable in the long term. The Falcon 9's design allows for the reuse of the most expensive parts of the rocket, significantly driving down the cost of space exploration. The first stage booster, which makes a major portion of the launch cost, is designed to be recovered and reused. SpaceX accomplishes this through precision landings on autonomous spaceport drone ships in the ocean or directly back at the launch site's landing zones. The process involves the first stage booster performing a controlled descent back to Earth after separation from the second stage. It uses a series of burns to slow down its descent and navigate back to the landing platform. The booster lands vertically, either on the drone ship or at a landing zone, depending on the mission profile and fuel requirements. Over the years, the Falcon 9 has achieved numerous firsts including carrying geostationary payloads, launching deep space missions, reusing boosters, and notably carrying humans to space with the Crew Dragon capsule. A significant portion of its missions has been dedicated to deploying the Starlink satellites, which aim to provide global high-speed internet. This rocket recently reached a significant milestone with its 300th launch. This particular mission involved launching 22 Starlink satellites from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, further expanding SpaceX's ambitious Starlink Internet Communications Network. Initially, Falcon 9 launches were less frequent, but over the years, SpaceX has significantly ramped up its operations. For example, the company achieved 62 launches in 2022, a notable increase from previous years. This momentum continued to build, with 96 launches conducted in 2023. SpaceX has set an even more ambitious goal for 2024, aiming for 148 launches throughout the year. This plan significantly exceeds the 98 launches completed in the previous year. As the workhorse of SpaceX's fleet, the Falcon 9's role is crucial in achieving this unprecedented launch number. In another groundbreaking achievement, SpaceX successfully deployed a lunar lander to the moon, marking a significant milestone in lunar exploration efforts. This event is a pivotal moment in the ongoing Artemis missions led by NASA, aimed at establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon and beyond. This achievement marks the first time in decades that the U.S. has successfully placed an object on the lunar surface. The last time the United States placed an object on the moon was during the Apollo missions, which concluded in 1972 with Apollo 17. Apollo 17 was the final mission of NASA's Apollo program, marking the end of an era that saw humans walk on the moon's surface. 
The Apollo program was a response to the Cold War space race between the United States and the Soviet Union. After the Apollo missions, NASA's focus shifted towards low-Earth orbit operations, including the Space Shuttle program and the International Space Station. The fact that SpaceX successfully landed on the moon while NASA recently failed to do so demonstrates that private companies may be outpacing traditional government space agencies in terms of innovation, efficiency, and possibly cost-effectiveness. Critics also argue that NASA's rockets have not shown significant advancements or cost reductions compared to private companies like SpaceX. This is often because of the fact that private companies are driven by profit, which motivates them to constantly find innovative and cost-effective solutions to stay competitive. In contrast, NASA is funded by the government and doesn't have the same financial pressure to cut costs. Since NASA's budget comes from taxpayer money and is allocated by Congress, there's less urgency to reduce expenses as their funding isn't directly linked to their performance in terms of cost saving. This setup can lead to slower innovation and higher costs compared to the private sector. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, serves as a prime example when discussing concerns over innovation, cost, and efficiency within NASA's programs compared to private sector achievements. The SLS project has been under development since 2011. The development cost of this rocket is estimated to reach around $20 billion, and each launch is projected to cost about $2 billion. This price point is extreme. To put it into perspective, with the combined development and single launch cost of the SLS, you could fund approximately 355 launches of SpaceX's Falcon 9 rockets, assuming a cost of about $62 million per Falcon 9 launch. Moreover, the SLS is not nearly as innovative as SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. While the Falcon 9 showcases advancements in rocket technology, particularly with its reusable first stage that can land and be flown again, the SLS sticks to a more traditional single-use design. Specifically, the SLS uses engines and technologies that, while proven, are derived from older space shuttle programs. For example, its main engines, the RS-25, are refurbished engines originally developed for the space shuttle. In addition, the SLS's solid rocket boosters are evolved versions of those used on the space shuttle, but, again, are designed for single use. The lack of reusability in the SLS design means that each mission requires a completely new rocket, contributing to the high overall cost of the program. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 has demonstrated the ability to land its first stage on a drone ship or landing pad, and then refurbish and relaunch it not to mention the Starship, which will make the SLS look antiquated in comparison. Unlike the Falcon 9, which reuses only its first stage booster, the Starship system, including both the spacecraft itself and its super-heavy booster, is designed to be fully reusable. Just three months after the second launch test, which concluded with an explosion, SpaceX is already gearing up for the third flight. The preparation involves a series of tests and installations. A critical component of the pre-launch phase is the installation of the flight termination system explosives. The flight termination system is a safety mechanism designed to destroy the spacecraft in the event of an anomaly during the flight to prevent potential hazards. This system is crucial for ensuring the safety of uncrewed missions, especially in densely populated areas or in scenarios where the spacecraft might deviate from its intended flight path. The termination system's role became notably significant during the first orbital flight test of the Starship earlier last year, when SpaceX had to activate the system both during the first and second Starship flight. During the first orbital flight test, SpaceX had to activate it to destroy Starship midair due to multiple Raptor engines shutting down unexpectedly. This action was taken after the Starship started tumbling about four minutes into the flight. The flight termination system's activation ensured that the Starship did not go off course and pose a risk of destruction on land, with the explosion occurring while the rocket was over the ocean. The second flight of Starship also faced significant challenges, leading to the activation of the flight termination system. Shortly after launch, the second stage vehicle experienced a problem which led to the automatic triggering of the flight termination system. 
Debris from the starship and its booster was detected over a wide area, highlighting the complexities involved in space missions. Despite a successful liftoff and initial phase, the malfunction of several Raptor engines on the booster after stage separation, and their subsequent shutdown or early shutoff, led to the booster's rupture. Although SpaceX did not confirm whether the flight termination system for Booster 9 was manually triggered, the sequence of engine failures and the booster's rupture suggest a high likelihood of a flight termination system-related shutdown. Additionally, the Starship program has seen a series of developments and tests leading up to Flight 3. One of the most notable upgrades is the introduction of a new building, which has become the facility's tallest structure. This building, referred to as the Wide Bay, is poised to substantially increase the factory's capacity for Starship and Super Heavy Booster production, its construction completed in less than four months. SpaceX has set a bold agenda for its Starship in 2024, aiming for at least nine launches throughout the year, according to a Federal Aviation Administration administrator. This plan marks a significant ramp-up in activity, with a third test flight targeted for mid-March. This schedule suggests SpaceX is aiming for about one Starship launch per month from then until the end of 2024. Musk has set a high target for SpaceX's Starship, aiming for up to 1,000 flights per year. This goal is part of his plan to enable human settlement on Mars and requires a significant increase in launch frequency. The key to achieving this is the Starship's fully reusable design, which Musk believes can lower the cost and increase the frequency of space travel. To support this ambitious number of launches, SpaceX is focusing on improving the production and launch efficiency of the Starship. With a launch cost of approximately $62 million for commercial customers, Falcon 9 stands out as a cost-effective option in the space launch market. This price point is particularly competitive when compared to traditional expendable rockets, which can cost upwards of $100 million per launch. The ability to reuse the first stage of the rocket is key to this cost reduction. The Space Shuttle launches cost over $1.5 billion each, and Saturn V launches, adjusted for inflation, cost about $1.2 billion. This highlights the economic advancements that Falcon 9 represents. In 2023, SpaceX achieved 96 launches, setting a strong precedent for their future goals. Building on this, SpaceX has ambitiously adjusted its target for 2024 to 148 missions, an increase from an initial 144. This adjustment accounts for four missions from the previous year. Achieving this would require launching a Falcon 9 or Falcon Heavy every two and a half days, marking a significant challenge in terms of launch infrastructure and coordination with entities like the Space Force and FAA. While SpaceX is making headlines with ambitious launch goals, Blue Origin has been facing challenges with its new Glenn rocket, delaying its initial launch beyond its original target. Recent movements of New Glenn's first stages to the launch site have renewed hopes for a launch within the year. However, parts of the hardware still indicate not for flight, signaling ongoing preparations and tests before its inaugural flight. SpaceX and Blue Origin, both led by billionaires, are prominent in the private space sector. However, their progress differs significantly. SpaceX has achieved numerous successful launches and is planning a record number of missions for Starship. In contrast, Blue Origin has faced delays with its new Glenn rocket and is still working towards its first launch. This contrast highlights the different stages of development and success between the two companies. However, there is one player aggressively advancing in the industry and threatening SpaceX's dominance, China. The nation's Long March rockets and other ambitious projects, including plans for a modular space station and lunar exploration, signify China's intent to compete with SpaceX's Starship and other leading space technologies. China's growing presence in space exploration highlights a competitive landscape and underscores the increasing capabilities of national space programs in the global race to explore and utilize space. China's space program may have a competitive edge due to its less strict regulatory environment, unlike the U.S., where companies like SpaceX deal with rigorous FAA oversight, potentially slowing progress. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching.
and I'll see you in the next one.